All right, guys, I have made it to the spillway. Water clarity looks pretty decent, solid three feet or so. There's a lot of water coming over the dam right now, which is what you want to see at this spot. From my experience, this spillway is way better fishing when there's a bunch more water coming over the dam. That is what we like to see. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Engineering Hooksets. Welcome to another video. Today, I'm at the infamous Shelbyville Spillway. This spot has a lot of potential for some cool fish, but it also gets pressured really hard. If you guys enjoy the video, please do me a favor and subscribe and stick around because it's going to be a good time. First thing I'm actually going to be throwing out is a cut shad. These are just prepackaged shad that I bought from Walmart. Let's open this guy up, take one out. I am going to cut this guy in half. I don't know, what should I throw out for bait first, the head or the tail? Maybe the head? It's usually a pretty good bait, right? All right, how's that look? It's not a very big bait, but hopefully it is an effective bait. Got that on a circle hook, weighted with a half ounce weight with some beads on there. Uh, let's just kind of throw it in behind this wall here. This rod right here is actually a medium bait casting rod. I've got this guy rigged up with 50 pound braid. Normally this reel is what I use for flipping and pitching, but I wanted to bring something with heavy braid on it today just because this is known as a musky spot. So if I get lucky and hook a muskie on a four inch paddle tail or something, I want to make sure I don't get broken off. The water is pretty clear though, so hopefully this 50 pound braid does not cost me any bites. We will see though. It's about 1 p.m. right now. I was talking to a guy when I, right when I got here who was leaving. He said that he got here in the morning and fished till one and he didn't get a bite all day. So that's not very good news, but you never know what's going to happen in a spot like this. It's a really big spillway. There's a lot of fish swimming down in there. Anything is possible, so we are not going to give up hope. Man, y'all, there are a lot of seagulls swimming around. Swimming? There are a lot of seagulls flying around right now. Usually that means good fishing because the seagulls are eating shad, which is what the muskie and walleye are eating as well. I am going to be running a fluoro leader on my spinning rod here. Normally I wouldn't waste five minutes tying on a leader. But this spot is pretty dang clear today, so might be worth it. All right, I just rigged up a drop shot on my other spinning rod. I'm going to be throwing a power bait flatworm here. These are supposed to have a ton of scent and catch a ton of fish. I've never used power bait max scent before, but we're going to give it a shot. That's the drop shot hook I'm using. I don't really know the size of it, but it's all right. Just hook it right through the nose like that. Hopefully catch a few fish. Got that Berkeley flatworm about one foot over a 3 8 ounce drop shot weight here. I'm a bit worried just because there's a ton of current and uh, drop shots like to spin and twist when there's current. It makes dealing with your line a real pain. But drop shots also catch a lot of fish in clear water, so we're just gonna give her a shot. Chuck this guy way out there. Give it a few seconds to sink and then start twitching it. Honestly, by the time it hits the water, it's already probably moved like 20 feet downstream. I'm also going to have to be very careful about not getting tangled in this railing here. Also not getting tangled in my catfish line. Let's throw a little more out in the main current there, see if anything happens. Yeah, my line's just getting instantly swept downstream. Man, I can see that drop shot moving the water and it looks like a fish catcher. Honestly, I might need to put a heavier weight on it. I mean, five seconds after I throw it in, it's already 30 yards downstream. Like very difficult to fish like this. One of the nice things about using braid is I just accidentally got my line all caught in that railing there and as I reeled it up to untangle it my line was just scraping on that rusty metal for a solid 15 feet or so but braid is super abrasion resistant so I don't have to be worried about my line being weak from that. Let me throw it closer to that wall. Throw it right in front of the wall maybe there's a fish hiding in that eddy. Oh that might be a bite. That's a bite. Oh, guys, I think I just got a bite. I, I really think I just got a bite. Oh, I probably jerked it out of his mouth. Let me see if there's any teeth marks. No, I don't think I see any teeth marks on this thing. The leader still feels good. I don't feel any frays, which is good news. Let's throw it back out there. Well, just got my first break off of the day. I'll try a drop shot again, but I'm gonna tie on a heavier weight. All right, I've got the hook tied on. This time we're gonna try a 5 8 ounce drop shot weight. That is a quarter of an ounce bigger than the last weight. So hopefully this will help it not get blown around by the current so much. 
All right, we are once again rigged up. And that definitely casts out there further. You know, with how quick my lure is getting thrown down the river, it must be pretty shallow out there. All right, I am gonna try just a little bit down river. I've seen a decent amount of people come and go without catching anything, which is not good news, especially since I drove an hour and a half to fish this place. Dude, there are so many seagulls. Seagull madness right now. Does anyone know if this spillway has Asian carp? You would think it would just because like the entire region around it everywhere has Asian carp. But I don't think I've ever actually seen or heard of anyone snagging an Asian carp here. If you've snagged an Asian carp at the Shelbyville spillway, leave me a comment. Let me know. What is, what is that? Do I have a small fish on? I might have a fish on. I don't know. I've got something. And now it's stuck. What? I think I just like reeled somebody's fishing line like 10 yards. What is that? Is that a fish or is that? I wonder if my line like went through one of the bleachers that's underwater. Oh, that sucks. I think it's time to set the drop shot down, and try a swim bait or something. All right, I just tied on this Demiki Vault blade bait. I've got this on the 50 pound braid. So hopefully if this one gets snagged, we can just bend out the hook or something, pull it out. Just kind of walking around a little downstream of my setup right now, covering some new water. Oh, what's that? Oh, that's a snag. Well, y'all, this is probably gonna break my lure off. Dang, rest in peace. I just realized that the sticker has been on this hat the whole time I've been fishing. Oh yeah, I don't know how well you guys can see the water clarity on camera, but I think you guys can probably see the benches. That's about three feet down. But when I put on these polarized sunglasses, these are from Waterland, but I can see clear past that about two feet or so. If you have not fished with polarized sunglasses, it is seriously a game changer. So I will leave a link in the description if you need some affordable polarized sunglasses. All right, now we are gonna be trying quarter ounce jig head with a salmo walleye shad is what this guy's called matches that uh matches that jig head pretty well i don't know how much y'all care about like lure aesthetics but i like it when the jig head matches the plastic this is really tough plastic too this is like saltwater grade well i've been fishing for over two hours at this point i guess if you're watching this i ended up catching a nice fish but Probably just talking to myself right now. Do I have a fish? What the heck? Oh my gosh, I got a good one. Oh my gosh. Let's freaking go. Oh my gosh. I was just sitting down casting because I'd totally given up hope. And then I got my, my lure got caught in a snag. And then this guy hit right as I popped it off the snag. He had it. Holy cow. I am hyped. I got to look up the regulations on my phone really quick, but I think I am going to keep this guy. You guys know I almost never keep fish, but I've actually never eaten a walleye. I tried a saw guy or I tried a saw gur one time, but it was cooked very poorly. And uh, I think the main problem was it was actually reheated. I've been fishing for two hours and 20 minutes to catch this. Okay, so he's about 15 and a half. I wanna say the limit is 14, so I, I gotta Google it really quick, but I think that's a keeper. Yeah, this says 14 inches, so he's legal. This is gonna be the first walleye I ever eat. I'm so hyped. It's, I mean, it's only a 15 and a half inch walleye, guys, but I am so hyped. I'm just gonna DIY a stringer really quick out of this 50 pound braid. I'll double it over like three times. All right, I've doubled over a bunch of 50 pound braid. I'm gonna tie that off at the end. And then I'm gonna double that over again. I'm gonna put random knots in this thing just to keep it like kind of together. Okay, there's my DIY stringer. Just 50 pound braid. I don't think we're at risk of his teeth ripping that line because that's 50 pound braid doubled over four times.
don't know how well you guys can see that rope up there that that red sign is hanging from, but it is absolutely filled with lures. That would be so fun to go up there and unhook one side and pull it over and just see all the lures that you get. Go ahead. I've got one. I've got one. I've got... No! 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 I wonder what the heck that was. It felt like maybe a tiny bit bigger. If I had to guess, I'd say that was like a... That was probably like a 17, 18 incher. Welcome everyone to the Engineering Hooksets cooking show. Today we will be making pancake batter Coors Light walleye. Oh yeah, if I haven't said it enough times already, I have never tasted a walleye. All right, we have my Walmart fillet knife here. And we're just gonna go right in here over the spine. Dude, that's honestly, that's cutting like butter right now. I'm like putting zero pressure on this thing. All right, go out the tail there. I don't know, how's that for a walleye fillet? Okay, there's our cheek nugget. All right, we're actually gonna save this and use it for bait. That's like a 618 fishing thing. Put that right in the thumbnail. All right, there is all of our cleaned, ready to fry walleye meat. All right, we're gonna be using Mrs. Butterworth's, and instead of water, we're doing Coors Light. We're gonna to try to get a few of these in quickly. Okay, so we really have no idea if we cook these properly, but I don't know. Does that look cooked, guys? I guess I'm just gonna try it and hopefully it's not gonna poison me. Yeah, that's pretty good. I feel like that's pretty good. Okay guys, so we just tried the wall and it was very good. This is actually the bluegill. I think for you guys it will have been two videos ago, but this is when we went ice fishing. And we're gonna do a little taste comparison. Bluegill versus walleye. We turned the oil temp down a little bit because I feel like, judging by the color of that, it's a little burnt. We, I think we just cooked it a little too fast. So we're gonna just take it a little slower with the bluegill. I think those are gonna be pretty good. I made a claim in a short one time that bluegill were the best tasting freshwater fish. And I only said that in hopes that people would comment and correct me and therefore I'd get more comments because I haven't tried very many freshwater fish, so how can I make that claim? Yeah, these ones are cooking a lot slower. We definitely rushed it with the oil temp last time. But that's okay, because we still have like five walleye fillets to cook better than those ones. All right, so the first batch of walleye, as you can see, was just a little bit burnt. So I cooked some better ones. That looks a lot better. So now we're gonna do a more accurate taste test and comparison with the bluegill. That's pretty good, that's the bluegill. That doesn't even taste fishy in the slightest. Now let's try the properly cooked walleye that is not burnt. Dude, honestly, I gotta give that to the bluegill. Even after being frozen for a week, this is better than the walleye. And the walleye is really good, don't get me wrong, but the bluegill is a little bit better. Yeah, so that's gonna do it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.